Hi, so for today, we're going to talk about free falling bodies. And for today's video, we're going to have three examples about free falling bodies. So this is still a part of the physics problem, or okay? a physics lecture of our series on physics. Okay, so uh, before we start solving some problems in free falling bodies, okay, we would still use uh, the rectilinear formula or the rectilinear uh, basic kinematic equation, okay? In such a way that, uh, if you can recall, this has a similarity on the rectilinear motion in x, in x direction. But in free fall bodies, we will be analyzing those bodies or those particles that uh, falls along the y-axis. So the movement of the body in our discussion for free fall is along the y-axis because by convention, this is our y-axis, this is our x-axis, okay? And as we all know, if we drop an object, okay, uh, if it goes to a straight line, okay, along the y, that is still considered a free-falling body and a motion along a straight line. In this case, along the y-axis, okay? So, uh, if we're going to recall, okay, our formulas, okay, that we have studied, uh, on the previous video, has the formula, we have the V is equals to V naught plus AT, okay? We have delta X is equals to V naught T plus one half AT squared. And we have V squared is equals to V naught squared plus 2A delta X. So these three uh, formulas are used, okay, if our motion is along a straight line in the X direction. Okay, in the x direction. If we are going to talk about free falling bodies, okay, we must replace, okay, all of this. The v here would become v sub y to denote that the velocity now is along the y, okay, the final velocity is along the y, v not y, to denote that it is moving now on the y axis, okay, plus acceleration. Now, if we have a free fall, the acceleration due to gravity is at work, meaning the, the, the acceleration now would be the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And this becomes minus because we have already distributed the negative sign of the acceleration due to gravity, which is minus. So this plus becomes minus given that what we are going to input here as the value of g is 9.81 because we have already distributed the negative sign here. And of course, we have the time multiplied by time. So this one transforms into this one when we talk about free fall. In the second equation, we replace delta x as delta y because again, our motion is along y. Okay, and v naught as v naught y time is still the same. And as you can notice here, the acceleration is changed again to G. And the plus sign here is changed to negative or minus because, again, acceleration due to gravity, if we are going to take into account the sign or the direction of the acceleration, it's always going downward. And by convention, going downward in physics is negative, okay? So it, is, it doesn't matter if, if we assign going downward as negative or upward positive, as long as we are consistent. But by convention or, and by um, by many uh, engineers using this convention, we will be using the the negative as going downward and the positive as going upward. Okay? So, and on the third equation, V squared, that's the final velocity, Y squared along the Y is equal to V naught Y squared, initial velocity along the Y minus, again, this plus becomes minus due to the fact, again, that, 9.81 has a negative sign okay, because it's going down. Okay, so let's try to solve some problems for today's video. So, again, a feather is dropped from the moon from a height of 1.4 meters. So, uh, we have a feather, let's say, we have a feather here. Okay, and this uh, feather is 1.4 meters above the ground let's say let's say this is the ground okay this is the ground 1.4 meters above the ground so the, the acceleration due to the gravity of the moon is 1.67 meters per second squared so 
acceleration due to gravity is always going downward so that means we have a negative 1.67 meter per second squared. Okay? And it says determine the time for the feather to fall off the surface of the moon. Okay? Determine the time to fall off the surface of the moon. So we are given a height, okay, which is this is the delta y, okay, the displacement because our point of origin is probably uh, this one here, okay, that is our origin. And if we are going to take into account the final displacement of the feather would be here, that's actually y minus y na. Okay? So, now, we have delta y, we have g. And we are asked to find what will be the time if I'm going to let go of this feather from my hand, let's say, what is the time for the feather to fall off the surface of the moon? Okay. The, the, the time it takes okay, for the feather to reach the surface of the moon. So, I can use what? We can use actually the second equation. We have delta y is equals to v naught y t minus one half g t squared. Of course, our delta y is y minus y naught is equals to our initial velocity. Since I'm holding the feather, okay, holding the feather that is zero, okay. So this term simply is zero. We have negative one half g t squared. Okay, and plugging in the values, okay, so our y, what is our y? Y is the final point, okay, of the feather. So if this is our origin, okay, initial point, and it goes downward with a 1.4 meter, so that would be actually what? A negative 1.4 minus the initial point with respect to our origin, that is zero. Again, we have a negative 1.4 because the displacement from the origin to this surface of the moon is going downward so that it becomes negative 1.4 minus zero because initially it is at the origin. So there is no dis distance with respect to the origin. So our y sub zero or the initial point should be zero. So we have negative one half. Okay, and of course, we have distributed the negative sign already here. So the G that we are going to put here would be 1.67 meter per second squared and multiplied by T squared. So if we're going to perform algebra to solve for T, we have negative 1.4, okay, multiplied by 2 over, okay, negative 1.67 meter per second squared. And we have T squared here. So as we can see, we multiply 2 here, 2 times negative 1.4, we retain the negative 1 here, negative 1 times negative, uh, negative 1 times 1.67 would be negative 1.67, and we divide both sides by negative 1.67, so as for us to isolate t. And as you can see here, okay, we have t squared, let me just rewrite, negative 1.4 times 2 over I'll drop off the, the unit first. So we have negative 1.67. If I take the square root of both sides, okay, we know that inside the square root, we should not have a negative sign. Okay, Inside the square root, uh, it should not be a negative. So this negative sign would actually cancel. So there is a uh, very careful thing to take note that if we didn't, Put negative here, okay? The value inside the radical would become negative, and you would not actually solve for the time. Your calculator would say that this is a math error, okay? But since we follow the convention that we have to put negative because the feather moves from this point downwards, 1.4 meter downwards, that should be negative. So we won't have any problems. So this should be. 1.4 times 2 over 1.67. So that, that is the time it takes for the feather to reach the ground. So we have square root of 1.4 times 2 over 1.67. And that is actually 1.29 seconds. So in 1.29 seconds, okay, this is 1.29 seconds, the feather reaches the ground. 
Okay, pretty easy, right? But we have to be very careful on the uh, signs that we're going to use. Okay, let's try another problem. A 1 euro coin is dropped from the leaning tower of Pisa. It starts from rest and falls freely. By the way, our example is uh, reference in Young and Friedman, okay, the, the physics, uh, the very famous physics book by Young and Friedman. So, uh, a euro coin is dropped from the leaning tower of Pisa. It starts from rest and falls freely. Compute its position and velocity after 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds. So, here's the scenario. We have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Suppose that you are here on the very top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and you, you drop a coin. And the problem is asking, uh, if you drop a coin from rest and it falls freely from the top of the Leaning Tower, compute the position 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds after you drop the coin and also its velocity after 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds. So, here, we have to first, okay, we have to first write our given, okay? So, our given is, it starts from rest. Well, of course, if it starts from rest, our initial velocity along y should be 0. At time is equals to 0, okay? So, uh, we are going to compute what is the position, okay, and the velocity after 1, 2, and 3 seconds. So, let's try at time is equals to 1.0 second. Well, of course, if you're going to drop the, the coin, okay? Drop the coin. So, the, the direction of the coin would be going downwards because it is acted upon the acceleration due to gravity. Acted upon, upon the gravity. So, it would go down. So, if you're going to set your reference point as uh, this, okay? Reference point as the origin as this, Okay, the, the moment you drop the coin or the moment before you drop the coin, you're going to set it as your origin. That would be your reference. Well, of course, it would go downward. So the displacement or the distance with respect to the origin would be actually, the displacement, I mean, would be actually negative because it's going downward. But if we are asked the, 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 the distance, all right, the distance with respect to the origin, it should be always plus. Okay? But in this case, position. So we are asked, to find what is the position with respect to the origin to which the initial position of the euro coin is dropped. So, at time is equal to 1 second, we have the time. We are given the time, we are given the, the initial condition. So, I can use the second equation, delta y. Okay, so we have v not y t minus 1 half gt squared. Well, of course, we are on earth, so the gravity acceleration due to gravity together with sine negative 9.81. So we, we know that V not Y would be 0 because this is 0. So our delta Y would be Y minus Y not is equal to negative 1 half GT squared. So we are going to compute for the final position. Initially, the position of the coin is at the origin. So, this would be 0. So, we have y is equal to negative 1 half gt squared. So, what will happen at time is equal to 1 second, we can directly substitute. We have y, we have negative 1 half, we have the g, which is 9.81, okay? We have already distributed the negative here, and we have the time squared, which is 1 squared, okay? So, what will happen if we have the 9.81, okay, because that is basically, if we evaluate this, this is, would be negative 4.905 meters, okay. The position, actually, okay, of the, 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 the coin is negative 4.905, okay. Actually, the position, let's say, let's not write meters here, Okay. Negative indicates that it is negative 4.9. It is below the origin. Okay. 4.905 below the origin. Okay. But if you are asked for the distance, that is 4.905 meters still below from the origin. Okay. So the position would be negative 4.905. Let's let's try to uh, include this. Negative 4.905 meters below. Okay, so that is below. The negative here again speaks of 
the the reference with respect to the origins it it is below the origin so that it is negative i hope you, you are getting what i'm trying to say here so at time is equals to two seconds we can also solve so we would simply replace this by two so we have y is equals to negative one half 9.81 times 2 squared so what would be the result so we have 9.81 2 squared from our calculator we have negative 19.62 meters below the origin okay so of course it would actually uh, uh, go further and, and the increase in the distance in the position every second is not actually uh, uh, linear because the, the, the euro coin actually accelerates because we have an acceleration due to gravity. So, we expect that at the time is equal to 3.0 seconds. Okay. So, we expect that the value or the distance with respect to the origin is much bigger. Okay. So, if we solve that, that is negative 44.145 meters. Okay. So, that's the position of the uh, euro coin after 1 second, 3 sec, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds. How about if we're going to find its velocity after 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds? Velocity. What is the velocity V sub y? Well, of course, we can use the first formula wherein we have V sub y is equals to V not y minus gt. And we know that V not y is simply 0. So we have Vy is equals to negative gt. So what will happen? To get the velocity at 1 second, we simply substitute the g, which is 9.81. Again, this is negative because it's taken from the negative g. Okay? And we're going to use a positive g here. Okay? Not including the negative sign because this is already the negative sign. So we have times time, okay? So the velocity after one second is negative 9.81 meters per second, okay? That's the velocity after one second that I'm going to drop the, once I drop the euro coin. So negative indicates that the body is going downwards. So we have a negative sign because it's going downwards, okay? So at time is equals to... Two seconds. So, how about that? So, we simply substitute it again here. So, we have V sub Y is equal to 0 minus 9.81 times 2. Our V sub Y, therefore, is 9.81 times 2 with the negative. So, we have negative 19.62 meters per second. It's changing its velocity. Okay? Negatively. Why? Because there is an acceleration. So, there must be a change in velocity. And again, we have a negative sign here to indicate that the velocity or the body is going downward with a velocity of 19.62 meters per second. At time is equal to 3 seconds, what will happen is simply substitute again. We have V sub Y is equal to 0 minus 9.81 times 3 seconds. So our velocity after 3 seconds would be negative. 29.43 meters per second. Well, of course, it's increasing negatively, okay, as it uh, travels the, the air, okay, per, per second because there is an acceleration due to gravity. Okay, the negative sign again indicates that the body is going downward. Okay, for our last example here on free fall. So, you throw a ball vertically upward from the roof of a building. So, we have a building. Let's say uh, we have a building. You are on the roof of the building. Let's say I'm here. Okay. So, the ball leaves your hand at a point even with the roof railing. So, every building has a railing to protect uh, the, the, the visitors visiting the roof. So, we have... Uh, uh, hand even with the railing, okay? So, at a point even with the roof railing with an upward speed of 15 meters per second. So, initially, here is the ball. I'm going to throw it 
upward, okay, throwing it upward with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. That is B not Y. Okay? The ball is then free to fall. So, if I'm going to, to throw this vertically, this ball, okay, will, will travel a certain height and then after some time, it would go back to me. Okay? Why? Because it is after the pan, the acceleration due to gravity. Okay? So, what will happen is that Find the position and the velocity of the ball 1 second and 4 seconds after leaving your hand. So again, we are asked to find what is the position okay, and the velocity y at time is equals to 1 second and 4 seconds. So again, we're going to use delta y is equals to v not y t minus 1 half gt squared in order for us to find the position okay if you're going to label this as our origin okay my my railing okay the, the, my hand and the railing as the origin okay or my hand as the origin that's the initial point so what will happen is y minus y sub zero initially my the position of my ball is at the origin so this must be zero okay and i have a v not y or the initial velocity, I throw it upward. So, upward means a positive velocity. So, we have 15 here. Okay? And multiplied by time, which is 1, minus 1 half. Again, again, even if I'm going to, 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 to throw this ball, even if it's going upward, the acceleration that the ball is experiencing is still the acceleration due to gravity. Remember that. So, we have 9.81 times 1 squared. So, if we're going to solve for the position, that would be 15 times, times 1 minus 1 half. We have the G again, 9.81 times 1 squared. So, if solving for the Y, the position of the Y, one second after it is tossed upward, so, the position of the ball is 10.095 meters. Meaning, it's a positive Y. Because with respect to this origin, okay, at our position, okay, in our hand, is 10.095. Meaning, that the ball, after one second, is 10.095 above our position or above our origin, okay, wherein we referenced the ball. So, one second, that is still, oops, one second, that is still above our hand. Okay? Now, never mind. So, after four seconds, find the position of the ball. Again, we will substitute that to our equation here, wherein we will simply replace the time is equal to 1 by four seconds. 15 times 4 minus 1 half, 9.81 times 4 Squared. And you will be surprised, okay, that after 4 seconds, the position of the ball should be negative 18.48 meters. What does this negative mean? Meaning, at time is equal to 4 seconds, okay, meaning that the ball is actually, what? The ball is actually on this side, okay? Let's say this is 18.48, okay? If I'm going to throw the ball here, okay? So, our drawing should be here, okay? So that if we're going to throw the ball here, so this would be 18.48 meters below our origin. So, after 4 seconds, the, the ball has actually fallen down, okay? From the reference, 18.48 meters, Okay, one second, it is still 10.095 above the origin or above your hand. And after four seconds, it is 18.48 below your hand or below the origin. Okay, so how about the velocity? Well, of course, if we are going to compute for the velocity, we can use actually, again, the first equation. Velocity at time is equals to one second and four seconds. Because that is what actually letter A is, is trying to ask us. So, we have by, we, 
at one second we can this would be zero actually uh, no that's not zero we are given with an initial velocity which is 15 meters per second upward which is positive minus 9.81 times 1 okay so that is 15 minus 9.81 times 1 and that is positive again positive 5.19 meters per second so as you can see one second after we throw the ball with an initial velocity of 15 it reduces to 5.19 why because it's slowing down as it goes upward okay because of the acceleration due to gravity we have the velocity vector going upward and we have the acceleration going downward then therefore the object being tossed okay or tossed should have a decreasing velocity okay so at time is equals to four seconds we can compute again 15 minus 9.81 substituting four seconds so we have 15 minus 9.81 times 4 that is negative 24.24 as you can see after four seconds okay the velocity is now negative which indicates that it is going downward as predicted by the position that we have computed it is already 18.48 meters below the railing or the origin okay, or our hand so what happens is that it, it should have a negative velocity okay because it's going downward so for letter b okay the velocity when the ball is five meters above the railing so what is the velocity of the ball okay when the ball is five meters above from the railing so what will happen this is your railing okay now this is your ball so what is the velocity when the ball is five meters above the railing again the railing or your hand is even with the railing so this could be your origin okay that is your reference five meters above so we don't know when will the ball be five meters above the railing but one thing's for sure if we are going to toss the ball okay even with our railing so the ball would actually reach the five meters distance from the railing when the ball is actually going up and at a certain time okay at, as time goes by the ball would start again to to uh to fall down and that is another five meters above the origin so we have two answers here the the ball when it is going upward and the ball when it starts to go downward okay so two cases of five meters above the railing here so again what are we going to use so we don't know the time so definitely we cannot use the two equations with time okay and all we can use is the third equation which is vy squared v not y squared minus 2g delta y okay why this because we don't know the time actually when will the ball be five meters above the railing so we don't know the time so we can use this equation so the vy squared okay so what would be the velocity this is what we are after the vy and we know the v not y is 15 squared because that's the initial velocity positive because it's going upward minus 2 times 9.81 delta y so why minus y not so the the final position would be five meters above the origin so that should be positive five five meters above minus okay minus zero because the initial point was even with the hand railing so it should be it should be zero so we have by squared equals to 15 squared minus 2.9 now uh, 2 times 9.81 times 5 so in other words uh, this is 5 times 2 that's 10 times 9.81 so in order for us to get the vy only because that's we are after what's the velocity after uh, what's the velocity when the ball is 5 meters above the railing so we have v sub y equal to the square root of 15 squared minus 10 times 9.81 minus 10 because 5 times 2 is 10 okay 
So what will happen if we evaluate that? We have 15 squared minus 10 times 9.81. Okay? So that should be 11.26 meters per second. Now, we evaluated the square root. Okay? We evaluated the square root. So this should be positive and minus. That is still a valid answer. Why? Because at the very first place, if we are going to throw the ball, it has an upward velocity. 5 meters above the railing, it has an upward velocity of 11.26 meters per second. It continues to go upward. And at a certain time, it would go down. Okay, And upon going down, it would again hit a 5 meter above the railing. And its velocity would now be negative 11.26 meters per second to indicate that the ball is already going downward. So, this is the velocity of the ball 5 meters above the railing. Positive and negative 11.26 meters per second. Okay, Because it has two cases wherein it would reach 5 meters above the railing. I hope you are getting what I'm trying to say here. I'm trying to clearly explain this. Okay, This wonderful... Uh, uh, problem in physics, okay? Okay, let's let's go now to letter C. The maximum height reach and the time at which it is rich. Okay, there is one thing that we're going to remember if we are uh, talking about free fall, okay? T max and Y max. The T max is the maximum, uh, the, 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 the time it takes for D projectile, uh, I mean projectile, for the body to reach the maximum height. Okay, the time it takes for the body to reach the maximum height. So what will happen here for T max is uh, at the very, okay, this is our ball, tossed, okay, this is our railing, okay. So at the very top, at the very top, okay, at the very maximum height of this ball, you would always remember that the final velocity would be zero. There will come a point that the ball will stop. Okay, for a very, 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 very uh, uh, little amount of time. And then it will start to fall back to you again. Due to the acceleration, due to gravity. So there is one thing that we are going to remember. At, at the time that it would reach the maximum height, the final velocity of the ball should be zero. So if we are going to solve for the Tmax, we can have... The equation V sub Y is equal to V not Y minus GT. Wherein our VY is zero at a maximum height. At maximum height. Again, let me rewrite. The VY or the initial velocity must be zero. So this would be zero. Our initial velocity is 15 minus 9.81 times time. And this time is the maximum time. Okay. The, the time it takes to reach the maximum height. So we can label it as 15 minus 9.81 T sub max. Okay? Transposing, we have 9.81 T sub max is equals to 15. We can solve for the T sub max. Okay? So we have 15 over 9.81. So the time it takes to reach the maximum height, again, is 1.53 seconds. 1.53 seconds. Okay? 1.53 seconds, it reached the maximum height. How about the maximum height? What is the maximum height reach when the ball is tossed 15 meters per second with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second above the railing? So, you, to get Y max, we can use the second formula. V not Y T minus 1 half G T squared. So, we have Y max minus y initial, of which our initial is 0. We have v not y 15. Okay, the time that we're going to use here is the t max because that is the time it takes to reach the maximum height. So we have 15 times 1.53 minus 1 half, 9.81 times 1.53 squared here. So let me just rewrite. So if we're going to evaluate this, 15 times 1.53 minus 1 half times 9.81 times 1.53 is squared. 
that is the maximum height reach. And again, we use the time 1.53 because that's the time to reach the maximum height. So evaluating this, we have the answer. You know, if you're going to solve for, uh, if you're going to study physics, you must have always a calculator together with you. Okay? The maximum height reach is 11.47 meters. Maximum height reached by the ball with respect to the ringing or the origin. Okay, letter D. Letter D, what is the acceleration of the ball when it is at its maximum height? So some of you would say, some of the, the common mistakes that the students say, ah, at the maximum height, the velocity is zero. The final velocity is zero. So the acceleration must be zero also. You are wrong. Because if the acceleration is zero at the maximum height, then the ball would actually be stuck in the air. Okay? Let us consider that we, let us uh, uh, always keep in mind that we, if we are going to talk about free fall, okay, the acceleration, whether it is at its maximum height, or 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 uh, one meter above, okay, the initial position or whatever position, the acceleration of the ball or of the body is always negative nine point eighty one meters per second squared, regardless of if the ball is going upward, because the acceleration that is at work in a free falling body is always the acceleration due to gravity. And that is equivalent to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? So, that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening to this wonderful topic about the physics. So, I hope you learn, you guys learned something. And if you are new to my channel, so please don't forget to subscribe for more tutorial videos. And I'll be helping you as uh, the best possible that as, uh, I can, okay? At the best of my ability by the grace of God. So, I'm willing to help you. So, thank you so much for listening. This is Engineer Abad. And again, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And again, thank you so much for listening and God bless.